Okay, what you're seeing on the screen is a 8x10 cyanotype that was made using a formula I've just developed. It's a, a two-step, a, kind of a developed out, rather than um, your classic formula where everything's mixed and you develop it in water. Um, so this literally took 30 seconds of exposure time. Now that was with a particular, you know, a light that was um, very close to it, very powerful, but even so, what I've calculated is this is 18 times faster than classic cyanotype. Um, I got the inspiration from this from another channel. A person had put a two-step where they had brushed, they had acidified the ferric citrate solution, put it on paper that was not ideal for cyanotype, exposed it for much less time, like maybe, I don't know, a ninth, one ninth or something, and then uh, brushed on the ferrocyanide solution. So it took a lot less time and I could use it on crappier paper because it was acidified. So then I got to wondering, well, what if I could do the same thing with the new cyanotype formula? And I started testing it out. Um, and I come up with a 30 second formula. Now, the advantages of this is you have, well, it's faster, number one. You do not waste the, the ferric oxalate solution because you're putting it in water. You're not, you know, doing like the new cyanotype where you have to heat them, combine them, filter it out. You're just putting it with water, so you're not wasting it. So it's even more, it appears to be even better at absorbing in paper. Um, it is already acidic slightly on its own, the ferric oxalate, so it seems to go on crappier paper. Um, the, the picture that you're seeing on the screen is a uh, very inexpensive hot press watercolor paper that says acid free, which is generally not recommended for cyanotypes. So, um, that's one big advantage. Now, I'm not going to say this is to replace the classic solution at all. There are two advantages to this that I want to try. The first one is it's going to significantly, significantly cut down time for ultraviolet enlargement, which normally takes hours, like, you know, up to a day sometimes. But the other really cool thing that it could possibly do is if it's put on a subbed plate or even on say the sticky side of um, transparency paper it could be used as an in-camera cyanotype negative so those are two experiments we'll try after going over this video so that's future videos so now we'll get into the formula and all that stuff and then at the end we'll do some comparisons so this is everything you'll need to make this formula you have distilled water potassium ferrocyanide, ferric ammonia oxalate, not citrate, citric acid, and sulfamic acid. Um, bottle to put the potassium ferrocyanide, a dark bottle for the oxalate because that's the sensitizer, and then a couple dropper bottles for these because you're just going to use little amounts. Mainly you're just adjusting pH. And I do have a developing tray, and that's to mix it. Now the mixture goes, and I'll have a little card that's flashed before this to show you. So you always weigh your chemical, put it in, and then fill water up to the amount. So we're just doing 100 milliliters for all these. So for the sensitizer, you put 20 grams, weigh 20 grams, put it in here, and fill it up to 100 milliliters and stir it till it's dissolved and put it in the bottle. So it's 20 grams of the oxalate to 100 milliliters of water. That's your sensitizer. The ferrous cyanide is a 5% solution. So if you have standard solution A from any kit, you can just dilute it in half, or if you're making it from scratch, take five grams of the potassium ferrocyanide and up to 100 milliliters of water. 
for the citric acid we're just doing a let's see we're doing a 10 percent solution so 10 grams with 100 milliliters of water and for the sulfamic acid we're doing five grams five percent solution five grams 200 milliliters of water and that's how you mix all of this and then it's uh, ready to go and what you're going to be doing is you coat the paper with a sensitizer and the rest of this is for after so we're developing this it's not like your standard stuff where you just add water to it you you'd use the citric acid with the sensitizer if your paper has an alkalinity problem now the ferric ammonia oxalate is already slightly acidic so you may not have an issue but in the case you do have an issue you can use the couple of drops of the citric acid to raise the pH up just enough to where that paper can be used and it isn't a problem. The sulfamic acid is used mixed a few drops at a time with the developer with the potassium ferrocyanide to get richer deeper blues. So um, that's what all this is for. Then you coat the paper. I'm not going to show coating paper because it's the same thing. It's very faint with this sensitizer. You can't, I mean, you can tell a slight yellow difference, but that's it. The only thing I will add is do not let it run or build up because then it'll just form a big green crystal, which will mess up the final print. So just make sure it's even. Don't let it run or get too wet. Let it dry all the way, and you're good to go. So we've coated the paper, gone over the chemistry. Now we'll expose a couple and see what we get. Now, all my testing has been done on this little exposure unit. It's just an 80 watt UV um, spot, not spotlight, but a floodlight I got on Amazon. Nothing special about it. It's about six inches off the table. And this is what I've tested everything on. Now, this is going to be a little more powerful than some exposure units, but it'll still give us the speed factor, which, like I said, this is about 12 times faster than standard or classic cyanotype solution. Um, so I'm going to put the negative on, put the glass on, then I'm going to expose it for 45 seconds. Just got my little timer here. And we'll see what happens. take it out and go over and see how it looks when we develop it all right so now it's time to develop it this is a this is the unique part of this that's really cool it almost develops like a palladium so this is a five percent potassium ferrocyanide solution and you can pour the rest of it off and reuse it you just got to get enough to get on the print. A little bit of blue will get in there, but it's no big deal. So, there's that. And rinse it off. I let it sit in the water a little bit just to try to clear it somewhat. Okay, so that's the 10 or the 5 percent solution. Now we're going to try another print with half that so two and a half percent fair cyanide solution okay so this is the same it's 45 second exposure everything's the same except we're putting a half dilute so this is two and a half percent potassium fair cyanide solution and um you'll see it works it may not give you quite as much deep blue it's not bad though I think you can go the lower percentage and you'll be fine um, so the next tests are going to be using the same two 
sensit or the same two developers, but we're going to acidify them slightly because potassium ferrocyanide is kind of slightly alkaline. So now we will test this. I'll have to run a test strip because the um, acid will speed it up. So I want to do a test exposure, and then we'll do um, the same two developers with the sulfamic acid to it. Now all we're doing is raising the pH of this of the developer. So put if and I'll show you if you take a, a test strip, a pH test strip, doesn't matter which one you go to, see it's it's about a five or six pH. So now We'll add a couple of drops of the sulfamic acid, and what we're going, what we're trying to do is we're trying to just um, lower it. That bluish color is just because I already used it once, so it's reacting with the sensitizer that's in there. So, eh, need a little more. It may take a few drops for a... Oh, one thing I did want to say is um, don't ever brush this on. Always just pour it on. And the reason is that it it, uh, it ruins the emulsion. Alright, so that's what we want. We want maybe a 4, 3 to 4 pH. Just acidic enough. So, same over here. I'm going to acidify them both. Let's see what we get. If you acidify these before you um, pour them on there, that green will not be there. Alright, so about four to five. Alright, so these are ready for our next test. Okay, so this was exposed for 30 seconds. I lowered it by 15 seconds. And now we're going to do the acidified 10% solution. As you see, come out pretty well. Um, so I'll rinse this off. It actually looks... So that's not bad at all. In fact, I almost like that better than the other one. So, um, now I'll hang this up to dry and we'll do another 30 second exposure with the 2.5% acidified potassium ferrocyanide developer. Okay, so another 30 second exposure and now with a 2.5%. Now you could use this a few times, but I'd say once it starts getting really blue, it's probably not going to work very well. I don't know that. I haven't tested it. <laughs> Alright, so we will let this dry, then we will compare them all and see which one is the winner. I was going to go over all the tests as far as I did one with 5% um, ferrocyanide and 2.5% ferrocyanide and then both of those same solutions acidified. Um, I'm not going to do that because what I found was that the best developer was... 5% ferrocyanide with a 3 to 4 pH from sulfamic acid. Um, that was the winner because this formula has a tendency to stain paper, primarily any gelatin sized paper there's a lot of staining on. And that, um, that solution was the best at making a good image and clearing out that staining. So 
Um, what I'm going to do now is show you a comparison of what we have. So this is a this is a standard cyanotype. This is all in on Canson XL paper, by the way. This is standard cyanotype solution. Um, and on my little exposure unit I built, keep in mind this is going to be a lot faster because it's so close to the paper. But um, this was a nine minute exposure, classic cyanotype, and absolutely nothing, nothing special. It's just developed in tap water. Then this image is the same classic cyanotype solution nothing special about the formula but it is developed in um, pure undilute vinegar white vinegar and it was a six minute exposure which it cuts down the exposure time the vinegar cuts down the exposure time and gives you more tonal range as you can see um, this next one this is the new cyanotype formula on the same paper and it was a three minute exposure time I was not very happy with the new cyanotype result and I don't know if that was the paper it was on I, I have a suspicion that a lot of it has to do with the paper um, but as you can see you get a three minute exposure time which is significantly faster it's by a third you know it's one third it takes one third the time the classic does um, and it has more tones but I just didn't care for the look of it and finally this is the 30 second formula the two-step with the developer and this I like this better than the um, better than the new cyanotype even and I think it has better highlights and all that but this is developed, this is why I didn't go over all the other ones, because this is seems to be the winner. This is 5% potassium ferrocyanide with 3 to 4 pH from sulfamic acid. So that is, um, that's the results. And um, now with this formula, I'm going to maybe do a couple videos based off of this formula and see what we can achieve with it. So uh, until the next one, I'll see you later.